You know, I got married too early. It was not a good relationship, like period. You can come here, but your parents are going to have to pay the other $24,000 a year, to which my parents looked at me and laughed. Their answer was, <laughs> yeah, their answer was, you should go across the street to uh, the community college. You could take that point as your rock bottom, right? Yeah. And say, fuck this. Like, I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm never in this position again. A lot of the best, the most profound advice is the, the simplest advice. Everyone wants shit to be complex. You got to go through this 97 step program to get to this outcome. And it's like, there, there's a reason why the simple, repeatable things continue to work. After the back surgery, I had no feeling or use in my left leg whatsoever. Mm. So I couldn't walk. Well, how's it going, everybody? I want to formally welcome everybody to the first official episode of the You vs. You podcast that is hosted by myself, Tom the Brain Battery. I want to jump right in because I have an extremely exciting guest for the first episode. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. I have someone who is a 20-year Navy veteran for our first official call. We're going to be going deep. We're going to be going wide, and we are going to be talking about a lot of things that are going to be relevant to every single person that is listening. So, Josh, if you want to take it away with a quick introduction of yourself, and then we'll just jump right in, man. Yeah, Tom, I uh, yeah, appreciate the opportunity to hop on, have a discussion, share some stories, hopefully give some uh, practical advice to everyone out here. But, um, yeah, I've, uh, so I've been in the Navy for uh, 23 years. I'm actually going to be retiring here and um, what? Well, retiring you know I'm, I'm 44 years old so moving on to something else here in august um been in it cybersecurity my entire career so you know not a sexy navy seal but i'm a you know gym rat self-improvement junkie you know all about you know being better every day and so that's what uh it's kind of what drew me to twitter um and you know what's what's gotten me making it a point to uh you know have discussions like this get my story out there see uh see what kind of people i can help fantastic man i love that and i think that there is that weird negative connotation that everybody in the military needs to be like you know the navy seal or the green right. beret but the fact is you know we have hundreds of thousands if not millions of service members that aren't the people that are doing crazy things like that however you know we are still going and we are going to get a lot of actionable insights from you and I think that something actually just happened with the recording some one second sorry a few moments later yeah so I I did want to talk a little bit about the topic that we are going to be discussing on this episode which is all about overcoming any obstacle and I'm sure as somebody who's been in the military as long as you've been I'm sure there's a lot of obstacles that you faced along the way and just through your personal life your professional life maybe even transitioning into a military focused life to getting into more of a civilian focused one so those are all things that I, I really would love to talk about so if you could just give us a little bit early background what were you doing before you joined the military was it something that you knew that you were going to do since you you know a very young age and then how did you actually prepare for the uh military career that you had yeah so the the one answer off top is that like I had one person in my family who was in the military and that was a, uh, one of my uncles on my mom's side and we were not, we were not close at all. So no, definitely not a person of influence. Uh, so, uh, out of, in high school, I played, you know, I played sports. So wrestled early on, uh, did some boxing, but then ended up settling on track, uh, track and, and football. Well, football was the primary track just to, you know, improve the speed and whatnot. So um, my plan, and I, I use the word plan loosely, out of high school was to play sports. But look, I, I, I went to high school in Northern California, and I'm, I'm the same height now that I was my senior year, and I'm about the, uh, about the same weight. Actually, probably in better shape now than I was then, ironically enough. But um, all that to say, strikingly average physical statistics uh, – when, when I was in high school. And so that resulted in two scholarship offers, both Division three schools, both private schools, and both partial scholarships. And the other half, they were like, yeah, you can come here, but your parents are going to have to pay the other $24,000 a year, to which my parents looked at me and laughed. Their answer was, <laughs> yeah, their answer was, you should go across the street to uh, the community college. Community and so, college, mm-hmm. A little bit 
kind of deeper into the mindset, you know, so I grew up where I grew up was not diverse at all. Right. And I'm mixed. My dad's black. My mom's white. Grew up with my mom. So I had a lonely childhood. Um, you know, some of my earliest memories are not pleasant. Um, and then, you know, ironically enough, you know, my mom had sent me, you know, my mom and stepdad actually just moved to, uh, to South Carolina. So my mom had sent me a box of some of my old things and in it, there's some of my old schoolwork. And one of those projects was like a journaling project I did my senior year. And so reading through it, I realized where, like how my mindset had developed from early on to that point. Um, the confidence, the discipline, um, both things, right, that are key to being successful in the military and also key to being successful in sports. So to your question about the background, the sports were kind of like when I went to boot camp, I had gotten yelled at so much playing sports that it was like, whatever, like I was in shape, <laughs> like I, 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 it was not a problem, but then kind of bouncing back. Like, so I ended up, I, I didn't play football, right? So I ended up going to Long Beach State for two years. Um, and my, as far as a military influence, my high school friend and then college roommate, his dad did 30 years in the Navy, retired as a, uh, as a Navy captain. So the rank, you know, the rank 06. Um, and so we were close growing up. And at the point, you know, I did a year of college and it was fun. You know, I was in Southern California, you know, a, a better situation uh, personally for me. Um, excuse me. And so I got to a point, though, like a lot of my friends were older and, you know, I was on the typical it would have taken me six years to get my get my bachelor's at the rate I was going. Like I wasn't failing, but um, I was just, you know, I was living the college kid life. Right. So but I, I, I felt like a pull to do something else. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like to equate it to say you're driving down the road. Right. And you're like, man, I re I'd like to get a a blue car and then all of a sudden you start seeing blue cars like you weren't thinking about it prior to that but then it came to your mind and all of a sudden your mind is like oh you want a word okay well we're going to show yeah. you blue cars right so, <laughs> yeah. um so when i started i started thinking about joining the navy because my two options were either go to a school closer closer to home or join the navy i i there was no option c or d for me um so I went back home to visit one weekend and I remember I was at my dad's house. He lived in uh, Berkeley, California at the time. And uh, I'm sitting on the couch watching a basketball game and a Navy commercial comes on. <laughs> and oh, wow. And I, you know, I'm sitting, you know, on. at the time, like God smack, you know, was riffing some hardcore, you know, hardcore lick in the background. And um, yeah, I, that came on. I went to the recruiting station like like when I got back to Long Beach, uh, scored well enough on the, you know, the ASVAB. Um, the armed services, vocational aptitude battery, um, and essentially got the ball rolling, uh, ended up joining. And the reason I bring up my friend's dad is because my goal, um, I knew I wanted, he, he basically told, he told me two things. He said, he goes, all right, Josh. He's like, I know you like computers and electronics. He's like, tell them that's what you want to do. He's like, and if they don't give you that, just get up and walk out. And that's exactly what I did. And, and you know, of course it was, they tried to hit me. They tried to hit me with a, hey, come in undesignated, which anyone who's been in the military knows. That's basically you go and then you get told what you're doing. And it's usually some mm. shit work, which is, you know, I'm, I'm talking literally cleaning toilets, painting, shipping, you know, shipping paint, rust busting, as they call it. Like all the non-sexy things, right? Yeah, so, all, the, all the dirty jobs. <laughs> yeah, like in, in, in legit hard work, right? And the, the jobs that make people do like a few years and they're like, Hey, I'm gone. Right. So, um, so I had the test score to support doing something else. And then I had the confidence to tell them, Hey, look, I, I want something with computers and electronics. You can't offer me that. Then, uh, then we're done. And so the other influence my friend's dad had on me, you know, he retired as an officer. So my, my sole goal in the Navy was to become an officer and, you know, it, it we'll get it more into it. I'm sure, but it took me 10 and a half years to do it. But then I, you know, once I got commissioned, you know, I've, I've, that's what I've been doing ever since. So yeah, that, that, um, I essentially, I finished, um, I finished a semester in college and then, um, uh, it was the delayed entry program. And then of course, like any good person going in the Navy, I watched Top Gun the night before I went, 
you know, even though I was not flying, <laughs> right? But, you know, I made yeah. the movie, right? So, uh, yeah, so I went to uh, went to boot camp in uh, Great Lakes, Illinois in January, which was uh, coming from Southern California, of course, was, uh, you know, a little, you know, I grew up with the Four Seasons, so, you know, I've, I've had snow. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it was uh, like those uh, Great Lakes snow is a little bit, a little bit different. Oh man, so, that must have been a whole yeah. different, a whole <laughs> different ball game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's how I got the ball rolling, though, man. And then led me to where I'm at now. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, genuinely, for for telling all of that. And I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you had a, a bad experience growing up. You know, I know that I I grew up in a, a rather non diverse place, but I I never faced any problems, and I was never really aware of things like that until I went to higher education and I got more involved in more diverse environments and it really is just a, a problem that I feel like we, we consistently face and it's genuinely a shame but I think that you've managed to not only overcome that but now also just completely surpass it right being an officer in the military and showing that just because you may not have had the the perfect circumstances growing up or 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 the the most picture perfect picturesque childhood you can still be the master of your own circumstances and you can continue to push the ball rolling forward so is there anything in terms of obstacles that really comes out to you for the past i mean i'm going to ask you to look back at a really long time here but you know key obstacles that maybe you faced over your 20 year military career that you say, wow, that really stands out. And you remember facing like an impasse where you had to choose like a left path and a right path. And then how did you actually choose to go down the path? And how'd you know that it was the right answer? And yeah, that was so, a bit of a loaded question. No, 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 that's a great question. Um, so, so, you know, one of the things growing up, um, you know, and I, and I actually, I posted about it not too long ago, but, you know, was, you know, early on, you know, my dad, I, and I'll never forget, you know, he, he had a conversation with me one time, you know, I think I had just gotten a job and he said to me, Josh, look, he's like, no matter what you're doing, he's like, just do the right thing. Right. Cliche. Mm-hmm. Right. I know kind of general no, I, as far as advice it. goes. Um, excuse me. Um, but that's one thing that always stuck with me so much. So, I mean, I tell it to my kids now, like on a regular basis, um, and, you know, and, and this is another thing I'm sure we'll get into, but as like, I found as I gotten older, like a lot of the best, the most profound advice is the, the simplest advice. Um, you know, we have this, everyone wants shit to be complex. Like you got to go through this 97 step program to get to this outcome. And it's like, there, there's a reason why the simple repeatable things continue to work. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be in finance, you could be in military, you could be in fitness. You could be you could be in a job that requires you to be violent. There are things that translate across all of the you know all of those areas. And so, um, as far as obstacles go, I mean, you know, a lot of my obstacles in the military, like the work, has never been a problem because um, you know uh, the, the the corollary to what my you know to what my dad told me about doing the right thing was always work hard. To another super simple piece of advice. Right. That people want to, you know, they want to take addition and make it calculus instead of just going, hey, you know, this works. So um, I've applied both of those to like my, you know, my, you know, my upbringing in the military. And so, like, you know, the one major obstacle I faced early on was, you know, I got married too early and it was not a good relationship, like period. Um, Probably got me the closest I've ever been to being depressed Um, and as you know, I, I, I've heard enough about your story to know that, I mean, you understand that it's one of those things that, you know, you, you know, you can have, you can have an issue in one part of your life that can just spread wildly to the rest of your life. Yeah, and so, it spreads wildly. It's just a ripple effect. Right. And so for me, that's, um, that's one of those things that I had to learn the hard way and I had to learn to separate and I've, I've actually become really good at because of my upbringing, and because of the military, I've had to become really good at compartmentalizing, which is is handy, but it's one of those things that can be, it can make you come across as cold, and robotic, and which 
I'm sure to anyone listening, it'll be, well, you're in the military, that's what you want. Well, yeah, to a degree, but, you know, the one thing I found being in this long is like, you know, a lot of people come to the end of, of a career and, you know, their identity is just tied to what they do. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm proud of the time I've been in and, you know, I, I, I wouldn't change anything, but I've never been like the... I'm in the Navy, but the Navy is not like who I am, right? Like, and that actually leads to how I started writing and all that. But um, to the question about the obstacle, you know, I had to do some, I had to do some digging, man. And, you know, you know, when you're young, you know, you think, you know, you think, you know, everything, you think you got it all figured out. And yeah, I know, tell me shit, like, you know, my friends said this, and I know this from reading that. And, you know, the, the reality is, there's no better teacher than experience. And I got, I got beat down, man. You know, I, I multiple breakdowns, you know, was going to the doctor talking about being depressed. And I, you know, and I kind of mentioned it on the space this morning. Like I remember, you know, the story that I was referencing was when I felt like I was depressed and I went and talked to the doctor and he basically told me I was riding submarines at the time. And he said, he looked at me dead in my eye and was like, he's like, you want to keep riding submarines? And I said, yes, sir. He said, he said, well, then you don't have a problem. And, and it was just like, well, damn, I guess, like, I guess I'll just suck it up then and, and, yeah. and go on. But, you know, in the moment, you know, it's like, wow, you know, these experiences are just hitting you. You're feeling it mentally and physically. Um, and then for me, you know, as I got, as I got through it and healed and really, and realized that like, you know, like you have to address this shit. Like, you know, I, you know, I tell my kids all the time, like, I'm like, if you're feeling something, you got to talk. Like, I was like, it will eat you from the inside, you know, and it'll manifest itself in, you know, stomach issues, skin issues, you know, literally your heart, you know, feeling a certain way. And, um, you know, I, I, fortunately for me, I've never had a problem talking about it. Um, and I'm really hard on myself, always have been, you know, just really, I aim, you know, I, I don't have expectations. Of, I try not to have expectations of other people, but I have extremely high expectations of myself. And this was even before the military. Um, you know, another tweet, I was, you know, talking about attention to detail, like, that's one of the core philosophies of the Navy. But it's one of those things that translates from the military to, to civilian life. So, so yeah, you know, I overcoming that particular obstacle of getting divorced, dealing with all the mental and mental physical tor turmoil of that, and then basically picking myself up and, you know, you know, for lack of better, put, lack of a better way to put it, just, just saying, fuck this. And like, I, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not going to feel that way again. And, 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 you know, that was just kind of the beginning for me. Like it wasn't, I didn't get to where I'm at now, like from that point that contributed to it, but like, it took me, it took me falling and down, falling down again and getting beat down again. But like, to the question about obstacles, like the, the two things that always, that always come into play are doing the right things. So that's having like, having a, having a code you abide by and falling back on that, referencing it frequently to remind yourself like why you're doing a certain thing. And then, and then working hard. And to be clear, this is not the hustle 24 seven grind, bro. Like, <laughs> like put, put the requisite amount of energy into what you're doing like take pride in your work. And if it's four hours of deep work, cool. If it's spread out across the day, cool. If it's like you're doing balancing, balancing a nine to five and then putting out great content and, and then, you know, building the community outside of that. Cool. Just make sure that, you know, I, I can't stand it when people half ass things and then expect the full results. You know, I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, I'm like, you know what y'all problem is? It's like, Y'all want the fruits of your labor without the whole labor thing. You know without what I'm saying? Like it, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I, there's no, there's no genie in a bottle. And this, you know, and that gets back to kind of the, you know, the solution is often more simple than we think it is. But that doesn't stop people from looking for shortcuts, hacks. You know, and, and, and look, I'm not judging anyone. I've been there. You, I used to have one of those, one of those ab shock fucking bracelet you know waist things like like yeah, I'm, thing that you see yeah, in the infomercials yeah that don't work you know what i'm saying yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean and, and really that's that's what it's all about for me man like you know 
having a code, having a philosophy you abide by, and then not you know not just talking about it, but like like acting like it's who you are. Like I want when when my day comes, I want people to be like, yeah, Josh was Josh was loyal, dependable, followed through. Like I I know my my close friends will tell you, my wife, close friends, if they ask something of me or if they depend on me for something, it's not a question whether or not it's going to happen because it's like, that's who I am. Like I take great pride in, in doing stuff like this, you know, trying to help people, mentoring people, coaching people. Um, and as kind of like an aside to that, I got a call yesterday. Um, a guy hit me up on LinkedIn about becoming an officer. He's already enlisted. Um, found out he got picked up yesterday. I was pumped, man. Like, yeah. like stuff like that, the little wins, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so yeah, man, I mean, that's a long winded raspy way of saying like, like I, I just think it's important to, to like understand why you're doing things and it doesn't matter what it is. It could be insignificant to someone else, but huge to you. And and that's all that matters. And it, if you have your thing, put your energy into it and make it great. Your version of great, not, not Tommy's version of great, not to version of great, not anyone else. Like it's gotta be, yours and then from there i mean anything is possible now yeah i can i completely agree with everything that you just said genuinely and so much of what you said resonated with me i i talk about this rather often but the concept that that you're saying the way that i conceptualize it is aligning your your being with your doing right if your con if your being wants to be the person that is honorable and follows through on their word and that's the person that you want to become your being you have to align your doing with that or else you're going to face constant cognitive dissonance yeah. you're going to be in this complete mental rut where you're going to constantly be in your head doubting your own abilities doubting yourself facing imposter syndrome and everything in between genuinely and i face that so often because of you know i'm i'm relatively young i'm only 26 years old but i faced a lot of obstacles in life because quite frankly circumstances that i put on myself yeah. right i i from a young age i was always somebody that was very ambitious i was always someone that was results driven however that all manifested in a very toxic relationship with fitness so I would constantly, you know, want to be the biggest person in the gym. And I constantly wanted to make sure that I was lifting more weight than my buddies. Yeah. And, you know, someone, you know, would always get in my own head. And that then eventually led to, unfortunately, a body that's full of injuries and, yeah. and torn labrums and back surgery and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that was because I wasn't aligning my being with my doing. Yeah. My being side is that I would always say that I wanted to be calm and I wanted to be collected and I wanted to be, you know, the wisest person in the room. But my doing was actually just a person who loved hitting the gym and the gym became my entire personality. Yeah. And it's funny that you said, you know, when people come out of the Navy or when people fully give themselves to something, the compart to the compartmentalization, is that the, the correct yeah. term that you've used? You know, I think that that's actually kind of important because you need to learn to leave certain things where they need to stay, right? So when I was somebody that was super involved in physical fitness and, and obsessed with it, that then became my entire personality. Yeah. So, you know, and then I realized that a little bit too late. You know, you're out, you're out with your friends or you're out to dinner with your significant other or your partner. And then you realize that the only thing that you can talk about is the gym or the only thing right. that you can talk about <laughs> is your desk job. Right. Yeah, yeah. And once I realized that I started to fall victim that I was like, holy crap, like yeah. I need to, I need to think of something else to put all of this time, effort and energy into that's going to manifest into something that's bigger than me. And then that was the idea behind creating the, the You Versus You podcast, yeah. the idea behind creating the Tom the Brain Battery page, yeah. the idea behind everything that I do, I now, and I believe I talked about this on the Twitter space too, is creating something that's bigger than myself. Yeah. And, you know, that's what works for me. And genuinely, that's why I love the way that you put it. It's not, it's not what works for Josh, and it's not what works for the 50,000 other gurus who are going to tell you how to do it on Twitter yeah. or on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, it's no shorter than that, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's figuring out, you know, using their experience to then shape your own and then taking best practices that work for you. Yeah.
There's never going to be one framework. There's never going to be an answer to the questions of your own life. You always need to be the actual, I guess you could say, your, your own master, but your own apprentice, yeah. right? So it's really just looking to people to bring you forward, but using those things to get your own version of taking action. And I think that's extremely important when, when overcoming really any sort of obstacle. So the the one point, and it, feel free to tell me if it's not something that you want to go deeper on. Yeah, you're good, man. But when you were talking about, you know, the divorce and yeah. the 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 things that you were going through there, both mentally and physically, were there any strategies that you used personally that allowed you to stay grounded? Or if there wasn't a case that, you know, you stayed grounded and you did let it get to you, what would you tell your former self in order to get through it in a more mindful way? and how to come out the other side being okay. Yeah, so in the moment I was not doing I was not doing healthy things. Yeah, it's so I, difficult yeah. to do in the moment, right. man. It really yeah. is. Yeah, I mean in hindsight's 2020 for a reason, right? So Precisely. Um but I did learn I did learn some strategies when I when I dropped the weight. So like I got divorced in 05 and oh, then yeah. you that, want to touch upon the weight loss journey a little bit too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tie that in for sure because that's the awesome. other. Yeah, that has some. There's some good nuggets in that one too. So I. Uh, awesome. So during the during that time, I mean, it was the usual. You know, drinking too much was, you know, was a hothead. Was, you know, I, I was going to therapy a little bit, but it was, you know, I was young. Um, thought I could figure it out all, you know, all on my own, and you know, there were some other major stressors there too, right? Because like. You know, I got divorced when I was living in Hawaii, my first time living in Hawaii. And then I transferred from Hawaii to Georgia. And oh, for wow. <laughs> military, the way military pay works, like you have your base pay that doesn't, so it changes, it never goes down. Well, unless you get in trouble and you lose rank. But for all intent and purposes, it stays the same. So if I go from, from Hawaii to Georgia, it stays the same. But the housing allowance, one of the non-taxable allowances goes down. And for, so I forget what it was back then, but I basically went from, uh, for sake of discussion, I was getting like $3,000 a month for housing allowance in Hawaii. And then I went to Georgia and I was getting a thousand dollars. And I didn't, you know, there's a poor financial planning element to it. Um, there was kind of just like flying by the seat of my pants, like, all right, hey, I'll figure this out as I go. And so like my rock, my rock bottom actually was kind of like, a year after the divorce, when I was broke, divorced, dealing with nonsense from the ex, not taking care of myself, um, not doing anything like terribly irresponsible, uh, but was just not not dealing with it effectively. Right, right? not so, terribly irresponsible, but in hindsight, you're like, holy crap, I could have handled that better. Yeah. yeah. So, so to the to tie it in to the weight loss, right? So fast forward from like 2006 to 2016. So I had just come off a tour on uh, one of the ships. And so being on the ships, you know, everyone think, oh, my God, an aircraft carrier. Look, man, like that, the stuff gets glamorized. But when you're in it, you're like, you're like, all right. Like, everyone's like, oh, I heart jet noise. Do you? Do you love when F-18s are taking off, like, two two decks, you know, above you that – you know, you literally have to sleep with earplugs, right? It's, it's oh my God. totally different. It ain't, no, it ain't no cruise ship. <laughs> right, right. For real. Yeah. So, um, so I came off my tour on the ship. And so a lot of lessons learned there. I had a terrible, le toxic, toxic leader. Um, mm. One example I give with this dude, you'd walk, walk, you know, down the hall, you'd see him. Hey, good morning, sir. And he'd be like, is it a good morning? Is it? And it's like, it's like, damn, you know, like, damn. like for you, yeah, listen, not, man, right? I'm on this ship too. All right. Yeah. yeah, for real, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and, and that was just, I mean, I, I dealt with all sorts of nonsense from that guy. And so it was just very stressful, involved in deployment, uh, a lot more time away from my family. Um, and it was just, it was a rough tour. So after that, I went to grad school in Monterey, California. And so my, my, uh, my view was like, all right, there's no way this is going to be more stressful than the ship. <laughs> Well, grad school when you're mid twenties with no kids is not grad school when you're mid thirties with three kids, married, having to balance all that. And it, it was 
and it was hard as hell, man. I let myself, I let myself go. I mean, I got up to like, uh, I got up to like 235, probably like 28% body fat. Keep in mind, you know, you have to, um, you know, make, you know, military has physical fitness standards, right? So I was towing the line of being outside standards. Um, and so I, I reached a point where, you know, the, the story I've told, you know, and, you know, posted about is, you know, one morning I just got up and I was just in the bathroom, just doing my usual morning routine. And I caught, you know, I saw myself in the mirror and I, I broke down. Like I was sitting on the floor sobbing, like, it like hit me, man. Just like, like it was, it's one of those things. Like we all have moments that you just, when you think back on them, you can remember exactly how it felt. And that's one of those ones for me. Like I, I, I will never forget how that felt. And as it turns out, you know, I had a buddy of mine, a golf buddy of mine who had been telling me, he's like, Hey, I've been working with this, this trainer. Um, and, you know, another part of my background, I mean, I did a couple of bodybuilding shows growing up. So, like, I, I've I've lifted weights since I was, like, 12 years old. So, like, I, I'm – it's not new to me, but I was just – I got lazy, was dealing – you know, dealing with my stress, you know, in an in a unhealthy manner. Um, and so I started working with this coach for – for primarily for nutrition. And uh, over – basically from December 2016 to September 2017, it's like nine months – um, I went from 235, 28% body fat to 175, 10% body fat. Um, I mean, basically just, I mean, lean, lean, more lean than I was when I did the bodybuilding shows. Um, and you know, the, you know, I, I know, I'm sure if someone watched, you know, that, well, how do you, what is, look, I track macros that that was literally it mm-hmm. balanced diet. I didn't do keto. Mm-hmm. I wasn't doing carnivore. I wasn't, it was straight up if you want to put a label on it, if it fits your macros. Um, but I was adhering to kind of, you know, 80% whole food, more like 85% whole food, uh, 15% fun foods um, the whole time. Lifting four times a week, cardio three times a week, nothing nothing crazy. I did a lot of walks, a lot of walks. And that's where I really, I really started to learn, you know, the importance of them. And so as it relates to how I should have dealt with things back then, um, I started meditating a lot. So mm-hmm. I meditated mm-hmm. uh, with Headspace for about a year, um, you know, went through their whole intro program. Um, and, you know, and again, I was familiar with meditation and understood the benefit. I just never, you know, I, I never saw the need. Um, and then I ended up using Calm for a year. And now I have the Aura Ring. They have meditation nice. in the app. So, um, so, yeah, if I were to go back to my, 24 year old self, it would be, you know, in no particular order, stop drinking, get enough sleep, pay attention to your thoughts and not not only pay attention, but just understand, have a better understanding of the way you tick. And, you know, someone asked a question on Twitter earlier, like, uh, what do you think the benefits? What's one benefit of meditation? And for me, the most significant one was in the quiet moments, you know, when the mind, you know, like there's a good book called uh, untethered soul that talks about, that talks about like your mind, the incessant chatter. Um, Meditation helped me become way more aware of, of my mind during those quiet moments, like, and learning to like, all right, if my mind's like, Hey, you got to go do this. You like just learning to just, to just be. And, um, you know, I, I, I think about the mistakes often and, uh, you know, I think everyone wants to live like a, a fairy tale life with no problems and all joy and, you know, no heartache, but it's just not real, man. And, and, you know, I, I, I'm not here to suggest that I've lived, you know, there, there are people who have had it harder than me. For sure. And people who have hard, had it harder, will have it harder, have gone on to do more, will go on to do more. But for me, you know, at this point in my life, it's it's I've learned that it's important to be be appreciative of the, the lessons you've learned. And, you know, as far as like core philosophies go, like, look, don't repeat the same mistakes. Like, 
because if you remember, if you, I mean, if you can learn a lesson, but if you, you know, if you repeat, you know, you get hit in the mouth again, then at that point it's a choice. You know what I mean? And, right. You know, anyone who's been, I know you've been involved in combat sports. Like, you know, you know, my time wrestling and boxing, like you leave yourself open to something, then it'll catch you again. But the smart ones, they know that, all right, Hey, this happened to me once I got caught with this move once, never again. Or, you know, I kept, I kept my elbows open, you know, and, and got caught by an uppercut, you know, you know, it should only take you once or twice, but after that, you know, it's going to be all about whether or not you're, you, you learn the lesson and then adjust it accordingly. So, you know, I, 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 I don't say these things to suggest that I could have prevented any of the earlier mistakes from happening, but I do think that, you know, I think we learn the lessons we do at, at the right times because, you know, this is another thing on Twitter, right? You know, everyone, you know, do these things, you know, go full monk mode. Let's make them all, man. Like, 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 like there's so many different ways to reach the same outcome and, and, and more specifically to reach the outcome that's right for you. And, and that's, I think what's most important. And so like, as I've gotten older, you know, I, I, I really, I try to be grateful for the things I've learned, fully recognizing that they were painful. Um, and then, you know, I internalize those lessons and then, you know, I, my latest mission is really just trying to use them, you know, to help other people. So that's really what it's been about for me, man. Yeah. The, I think that the most painful things that I've been through in my entire life, both mentally and physically have genuinely been my, my greatest assets in, in my entire life. And I, I speak about this pretty often, but it really comes down to that old cliche. It's like, if it wasn't for the bad times, there would never be a reason for the good times. Right. right? Yeah. And if we don't have these hardships and if we don't have these lessons that we're actively putting ourselves forward to and learning from, we're just going to be the same exact person that we were a year ago. We're going to be the same yeah. exact person that we were two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. And I think that just like you said, this idea of living these like fairy tale perfect lives is is just is nonsense. And quite frankly, it's probably a bit of fear that comes through in that fear in the procrastination, right? Fear in the inability to do things that put you outside of your comfort zone, right? You faced a serious inroad where that one day that you saw yourself in the mirror and like you said, you had a breakdown. You couldn't believe where you were in your life at that point. And in my mind, at least that's a mental crossroads, right? Yeah. You could have chosen to take, let's say the left path, and continue down the path that you were currently on and, and be like, oh, I'm so down on my luck and, and get worse off physically, get worse off mentally. Yeah. Or you could take that point as your rock bottom, right? Yeah. And say, fuck this. Like, I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm never in this position again. Yeah. And I faced something that was incredibly similar to that. And what it, what it was in my, my moment, and I don't want to seem overly dramatic when I speak about this, but... It was the moment that I got out of my surgery yeah. um, when I had so I had the, my back surgery at um, at a surgery center and I after the back surgery I had no feeling or use in my left leg whatsoever mm. so I couldn't walk yeah so I I got put into a wheelchair by two nurses um, and they carted me out and like I'm not I'm not a small person either like I'm like I'm like a pretty heavy dude like you know yeah. bodybuilding and powerlifted my my whole life. And I remember they put me in this wheelchair and like in that moment when I was being carted out, I felt like I just felt so I, I don't even know if the right word is emasculated, but yeah. like I'm like, holy shit, yeah. like this is like all like every choice that I've made in my life has led up to this exact moment that I am currently in a wheelchair being carted out of a surgery center and I need to do everything in my power to not only get back to where I was physically but do it in one a healthier way so this never happens again and two so that i don't have to feel this way ever again right so the minute that i made that decision in my mind to say i no longer want to be down this path of anxiety i no longer want to be down this path of depression it's an important mindset shift for you to make in order to actually flip on the switch to start doing the actions that you need to do 100 so, 
that's why I'm I'm a huge fan of reading things like self help books because I feel like they can provide a lot of perspective. But you can read fifty self help books, but if you never make that switch in your head to make actual detail oriented action, yeah, you're never going to come out the other side. It's just never right. going to happen. Yeah. So I, I really love the idea of, of you. I, I, will, I don't want to say that I love the idea, but, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that you have such a poignant moment in your life that you can reflect on because I'd like to think that a lot of people who have come out of tumultuous journeys like that always have that one moment shift. And I feel like it's a very collective consciousness yeah. of, of humans that they can always be like, yeah, this was the point that I changed my life. Yeah, and a lot of it, I think, is is like a, it's the moment you decided, you know, you had enough. And you bring up a great point, you know, I actually made the comment earlier, like, like, look, I, I know, like, mental health gets talked, you know, it gets talked a lot about, it gets talked about a lot now, which is good, because it's very important. Um, but I, I've all, I think a lot of the times getting, getting out of a situation, improving at something, like it comes down, it comes down to a choice. Like you don't just sit there and all of a sudden get like this inspiration to be, to be better, do better, do more. Like something has to hit you. And this go, you know, it goes into like change period. And this is why, you know, you can read it on in many different books, articles, et cetera. But like, like, yeah, you can't make other people change. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, the only time people change is when they have the proper incentive to do so. And, you know, for you, that was coming out of surgery for me, catching a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Um, and, you know, and that obviously wasn't the only change, but the more significant ones. And, and, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people wait to be like rescued or wait to be, mm -hmm. like, Hey, mm -hmm. if I read one more book, if I go to one more seminar, like, it's like, no, man, like you have to take action. Like, like, and that's, and that, that's not just a military thing for me. I mean, like, I've always been kind of biased to like doing like, I, at the end of the day, like, I love reading. I'm a, you know, huge Mark Manson fan, Ryan Holiday. Um, you know, I, I, you know, James Clear, you know, Atomic Habits, one of my favorite books ever. Um, and uh, so many great ideas, like potentially life changing ideas, but it's like, you know, one of the guys, you know, one of the writers I follow, um, the writer Ayo, and he's awesome. He talks about, you know, the whole mental masturbation of like, oh, I'm going to read all these books. And it's like, but you're mm -hmm. not doing shit with it. So it's like, exactly. like, what's the, like, it, it, it becomes pointless when you, you know, you know, you could read the 10th book or you could read, you know, read two excellent books 10 times and get more out of those than, you know, reading ten, but then you know that's the whole. Oh, I read ninety-seven books this year. It's like, come on, man! Like, you could have read like five, and then you know went and done a bunch of shit. And it's like, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I and I get it. I know some people. You know, there are people that read a lot and and act on a lot of those ideas. But in terms of like the Twitter flexing, you know, that's kind of the that's yeah. what I find amusing. So yeah, I mean, I, I I wholeheartedly believe that like the path to improvement starts with a choice. And a lot of people, people listening to me like, Oh, well, no shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, no shit. Because you know, it's, it goes back to my comment about things being simple. Like it, it doesn't have to be some, you know, some long winded, you know, month, you know, months long process. Like you get a system in place that works for you, that helps you mentally, physically, spiritually, you do that, you hammer away at that. You're going to, you will make, freaking progress like it, it is it, it's there are a few things guaranteed in life but consistency is one of those things that will guarantee some progress oh, like how much yeah. right yeah so so yeah i i the the choice thing is something that man i i i man I, if i could like send emojis right now i'd be hammering that <laughs> shit there <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it, so it, it's, it's huge bro yeah, there was there. There's a concept that um, I I can't remember if I read it or if it was on a podcast that I was listening to, but I I, I conceptualized it myself into something that I think can resonate really well with a lot of people listening. Is that a lot of people want something to be complex, so they have the excuse to not do it. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's like, oh, well, I mean, look how difficult it is to lose weight. I need to do this and do that and do this and make sure that I'm eating low carbs and do this. But the reality is eat less calories than you're expending in energy. You lose weight. You get into better shape. Your health improves. There you go. That's the formula. Self-improvement is simple, but it could also be really fucking hard. Yeah. But simple and hard are two completely different – like they're not on the same line. That's two different lines. Simple and complex are on the same line. That's yeah. the spectrum. But the fact of the matter is, is that self improvement, and I would I would go on record saying this every single day, is not complex, but it's right. damn hard. Yeah. But you need to have the consistent action in order to actually improve yourself. And yeah. the the thing that I also want to say for anybody listening, and I think that you you would agree with this too, Josh, is that you don't need to have it all figured out in the beginning. You're never going to have your your point A and then whatever you think your point B is and you're going to end up at point B at the end of five months. It's never going to happen that way. Life is going to happen, right? Life will – life. there is no boxer on the planet except maybe Mike Tyson that's going to hit you harder than life will, right? Right, yeah. (laughs) And you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have left rights and you're going to have zigzags. But you need to continue to stumble forward because the minute that you stand still – that is when you are not making progress. Right. Hell, even if you stumble backward, at least you can learn a lesson that's going to help you stumble forward two times as fast. Yeah. When when I was going through my my self improvement journey pertaining to my mental health, I was terrified of doing things like meditation because every time I would meditate, just like you said, the voice in your head starts getting to you when you sit silently in your thoughts. But then actively learning to stifle that voice down, actively learning to sit with that voice and process the emotions that I have. Now I can meditate for 30 minutes straight without having even like a single thought that pops into my head, right? But I was scared to do that in the beginning. It's getting through that fear, making sure you can actually take that first step forward that is going to consistently build momentum through, like you said, consistent action in order to bring you to that point forward where you want to be. And there's never going to be a predetermined destination unless you're doing things that are very quantitative. But I like to think that a lot of people want self-help to be quantitative when self-help is actually qualitative. Like, I just want to feel better, right? That's what self-help is all about. But then you have a bunch of these quantitative points underneath it that you think are going to make you feel better, right? Like, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to be able to meditate for 15 minutes. I want to read three books. But the reality of it is is this large qualitative point of I want to feel better, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, the the strange paradox of self-improvement is that, you know, I learned this when I dropped the weight, right? It was always like, all right, to your point about being quantitative, we're going to get this. This is the number we want. Now, the lessons I learned during that nine month period were, you know, when I got to that point, I remember stepping on the scale, 175.8. And I emailed my coach, Brian. I'm like, hey, man, I'm like, like we did it. And, you know, got the congratulations and all that. But it's like, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm like, damn, that was anticlimactic. Like it was just like <laughs> But the beauty was in the journey. Right. And 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 that's another, you know, yeah, cliches are cliche for a reason. And, you know, I look back at it and it's like, man, like I I remember the hard times, you know, and you know, one of the things I'm you know, I mentioned this in the space too, like, you know, people talk about it, but they talk about losing friends and whatnot during self improvement, man. I had the num I mean, hell, there was some resentment for my wife like when I was doing it and, and it wasn't because it was taking up a lot of my time, but it was just, I was a very, I was dedicated to what I was doing. It was very, very meticulous about it. Um, you know, I had friends, you know, typical crab in a bucket, you know, Oh, what are you trying to do that for? Oh, you think you're better than everyone else. And it's like, I, the thing that's always shocked me about stuff like that is I can't imagine being that insecure to where I try to knock someone else down because they're trying to get better. That's like me, you know, oh, let me, let me, let me bag on Tommy because he's got, you know, thousands of followers. I only, I don't think I have 500, but it's like, or you can be like, Hey, we can learn something from each other. We can have great discussions, you know, chop it up about life improvement or whatever the case may be, because 
like we're, we're this journey yeah it's intensely personal but we can always like learn from each other and it doesn't matter if there's an age gap i mean one of my favorite followers on twitter is tone who teaches learning dude's 18 years old he's brilliant brilliant and it's like you know you, you there's so much to be gained in the, just the day to day but like I think that kind of speaks to like the approach to the journey, like and and it comes back to you know like like you mentioned earlier, just really being present. You know, we get so caught up in the outcome, and it's like yeah, I care about the outcome, but you got to live the day to day and taking those repeatable steps over and over again, and and doing enough, you know, to keep yourself, you know, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna deal with some boredom, some monotony, but doing enough to keep it, you know, different so you you stay stimulated, you know. On the days it gets hard, on the days when your brain is like, hey, man, go eat three donuts. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the binge eating days, yeah, man. Real, I've, been, I've been through a couple of those. Yeah. I won't lie. Hey, man. Hey, tacos. Tacos are my thing. So. Oh, that was? Yeah, that was yeah. your that was Yeah, your that, was my, that was oh, my joint, man. man so. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, man, I'm, it, I'm it's Italian, sounds, so it's yeah. easy for me to get into those cheat days, man. I promise you. When I well, back when my my grandma used to visit, but now yeah. you know I, I live in my own apartment. But uh, yeah, dude, it's 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 hard to say no to an Italian grandma. Let me yeah. let me tell you that. You try telling my yeah. 80 year old Italian grandma, yeah. oh grandma, I can't eat because I'm watching my macros. I'm gonna get a wooden spoon in yeah, the back right, of my real. head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Four, you'll be eating soon enough, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh man, but really, you know, I think that there's 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 a lot of stuff that we just said that has always resonated me throughout, you know, the journey that I had way prior to coming onto social media or doing any sort of thing in like a public eye. And it's, it's the beauty in the journey. Right. And like you said, everyone is so fixated on the destination that I feel like when they actually reach the destination, it's like, Oh yeah, nice. What now? Right. Right? Right. (laughs) Cause you gave your entire life to doing it and you know, you, you put so much time, effort and energy into it. And then when you affix onto that quantitative number, you think that all your problems are going to magically be solved as soon as you hit that number. And I I like that you talked about weight loss because you know, there, there's beauty in the journey of weight loss, but then there's also a dark side of weight loss that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. And I went through a pretty steep weight loss journey when I came out of one of the first relationships that I ever was in in college. Um, wound up getting cheated on by a long term girlfriend, and um, I was I was fat, I was unhappy, I was extremely like you know out of shape, and I was like, okay, like I'm going to get myself fit and back into shape and lean because I, I want to look good for women. Let's let's not yeah. hold bars here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I went on this long weight loss journey, but like I did it like absolute turbo mode because again, I'm somebody who either you're either doing 100 percent or zero percent. That's yeah. just the way that I am. But I was eating so few calories and don't get me wrong, the weight peeled off and I and I looked great. But all of a sudden, my, my brain chemistry started to shift, yeah. right? you know, the world feels less vibrant. You feel like you have less emotion and you know, you're, I was only eating something like 1650 calories a day. Right. And, and (laughs) yeah, I mean, your, your sex drive plummets. I mean, so many things, you know, you feel less energy and like that's, I feel like that's the really unsexy side of weight loss that a lot of people don't talk about. So learning how to reach the destination, especially pertaining to weight loss, but maybe even everything in life in a, just like you mentioned before, a sustainable manner. And that's where I also think not to, not to knock any of my fellow coaches that are on Twitter. I think that that's where a lot of the not, I shouldn't say it's not intended, but it still comes off cross as toxicity is in the Twitter coach space. Yeah. Because Everyone's always posting about, you know, the like you said, the, the cold showers and the doing all these crazy things. But the reality yeah. is, is that I would assume that most of those people are probably only doing that 75% of the time, right? But when you're constantly tweeting about it, then people who don't have that that lens or that object permanence are like, well, I need to constantly be doing this in order to face action. If you take that much action, at least this is my personal philosophy – if you put that much action into the universe, the universe is going to have twice as much reaction back towards you. Yeah. So if you don't have time for yourself to just be a normal person, your brain is going to react in very adverse ways. That's going to take you longer to get to that journey. I'm sorry, longer to get to that destination. And just like we talked about right now, the binge eating days, right? You know, when I would restrict my calories that heavily, let's say that I I went out drinking with some of my buddies 
I would be like, oh, well, I already drank a thousand calories worth of beer. I might as well have another 1200 calories right. worth of snacks when I get back to my apartment. Yeah, right. Bro. And <laughs> that's the, that's the action and reaction there happening. Yeah. Is it, is that something that you experienced as you were, you were going down this journey of self-improvement? Yeah. So like during that time, I mean, I, I, I was still drinking periodically. Um, but definitely the, the lowered inhibitions, like, you know, Hey, you know, a couple cocktails, even though it would be like um, Ciroc and Fresca or something like that. So relatively low calorie, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, your brain's already like, all right, I'm in feeling loose. Like, yeah, go on, get, you know, go on, grab a snack. Right. And so, and I, I eventually, you know, I think one of the biggest things I learned is like, you can, you can do multiple feel good things and, and, and still reach your goal. But it's like, you know, it's all about moderation. Right. And so, I mean, ultimately for me, I cut out alcohol completely because frankly, I like, I like eating more than I like drinking. So it was real simple for me. Like, all right, I'm gonna get my calories here. Like, would I rather have 28 grams of honey roasted peanuts or would I rather have a freaking cocktail? It's like, give me the peanuts every yeah. time. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Same here, man. But yeah, I, 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 um, there were certainly times when it was, when it was more difficult. Um, Typically, if I kind of busied myself, um, I would be all right, you know, but I mean, yeah, when, when you're, when you're dropping weight, I mean, there's feeling hungry is part of it. I mean, you know, then of course another, you know, my, I make sure I drink plenty of water and that's, you know, I was drinking like a gallon a day. I mean, I still drink a gallon a day now. Um, and that helps out a lot. And of course, you know, low calorie drinks, you know, sparkling water, stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it you know, to your point, I mean, we've kind of touched on it a few times, but like, you know, you, you can get advice from, I'm a huge proponent of getting advice from people who have succeeded doing whatever you're trying to do. Um, excuse me, but like you have to apply. It's not just like, all right, Tommy did this. He got these results. So I'm going to do exactly what he did. And then it's going to work for me. It's like, no, that's not necessarily the case. Like, okay. For the nutri from the nutrition standpoint, you know, does the general framework of tracking macros and being in a caloric deficit, will it work for most people? Yes. But how that looks for each person is going to be oh, different. 100%. Right? And so like what, you know, it, a lot of it for me came down to like, all right, what can I do to make this sustainable? Like from a food perspective is I'm eating stuff every day that I enjoy eating. You know, I'm not, I'm not being overly restrictive. Um, you know, I'm a creature of habit, creature of routine. So for me, it's real easy to just be like, all right, here are these 20 things I like to eat. And I just kind of rotate, rotate through them. And, you know, once I saw that initial result, because, you know, actually like a couple years, a couple years ago now, um, I did the, uh, I did 75 hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got, I got even leaner. I was like 15 pounds heavier, but it was like a, I was like 190. 9.3% body fat. Um, and now obviously that was two 45 minute workouts a day was doing the same diet in. Right. And so, um, yeah, man, I mean, I mean, there are so many different ways to go about it. Um, and then, yeah, I know we're like, we're kind of talking about weight loss, but really the same thing applies, to, you know, yeah, like say, take, uh, you know, take writing for instance, right? Like, you know, I, you know, I, I felt the pull to do something else as I'm kind of making my way out of the Navy. Um, and so writing turned out to be that thing. And I actually saw a, uh, a good post by, um, her name's Eve. She has the part-time creator club, uh, newsletter. So she posted a good thread on the dude who created the Leatherman tools, the multi tools. And one of the, one of the awesome things about that, that, that should resonate with anyone getting started is that, you know, so the multi tools, right. Have multiple knives, screwdrivers, et cetera. This dude had no background in knife making at all, at all, mm. but he just started. He knew that's what he wanted to do, took the steps to get started. And then now multi-billion dollar industry, which, you know, I, I, you know, in terms of like a goal, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, for, so in the Twitter space, right? Oh, $10,000 MRR. And it's like, it's like, okay, well, you know, what if that's like the high point and what if what's good for what if what if what's good for Josh is five thousand dollars a month? What if that allows me to reach 
you know, what my freedom looks like. Yeah. Then that, I mean, that's what it's all about. Like it, it, it 10,000 is kind of like, it's, it's like the cold showers of fitness, right? Everyone kind of just like, you gotta, like this yeah, is what right. you gotta right. do this. Yeah, it's kind of, it's 10, like, yeah that's, the, that's the big sexy number, but let's, right. let's worry about 1,000 first. <laughs> right, for real, for, yeah, I mean, yeah. You can take it back to like $1, right? Like, exactly, yeah, I mean, let's, yeah. let's get the first dollar online before yeah, we start yeah. talking about 10,000, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the, the journeys are always just interesting to me because you know, it's, it's very, I think another trait that comes that really, that really helps is, I mean, it's just patience, man. Like, like yeah. you have to understand what you're going after and then just put in the work every single day. Like, like Justin Welsh, man, uh, I think it was Justin Walsh, him or one of the other bigger creators. Uh, one of them had a newsletter but that talked about no zero days. And that's it really resonated with me. And basically as I, as I interpreted it was, putting in some work towards towards your end goal every day, whether it be recording this podcast, whether it be a space, whether it be firing off a couple of tweets, it could be, it could be low effort stuff. But as long as you are putting in work towards that goal, I think that's, that's what is going to keep you moving forward and what will ultimately help you help you succeed. Yeah. I think that that's a, a huge I wouldn't even call it a strategy. I would call it a huge mindset that people should have when they're looking to overcome any obstacle. And whether that obstacle is losing weight or that obstacle is growing a social media profile or that obstacle is reaching that $10,000 MRR for your online agency, which yeah. seems to be everyone that I interact with on right. Twitter these days. <laughs> and no knock to them, by the way. I love you yeah, guys. Yeah. But it's the it's the not putting up zeros. Yeah, right. just every single day, even if you just write one tweet, you know, even if you're, I don't even know if you have the flu, if you have COVID, if you're, if you're knocked on your ass and you're, and you're sitting in your bed, if you can just even just put up a one instead of a zero, yeah. you're still putting consistent action towards that goal. And that, I love that idea because it really is something that I subscribe to without even having a phrase to it when I first started my Twitter journey yeah. and my social media profile journey. I'm somebody who would do things for like two weeks and if i wasn't seeing an immediate return on it i would just stop yeah that's why i used to yeah that's why yeah i was like i've screwed it's not worth my time yeah that's why i i really fell victim to i wouldn't even call it full victim because i made a decent amount of money but like doing like options trading on the stock market was just very fast high risk high reward like you know in 30 minutes you're in a trade and you get out if you made money you did if you lost a grand you lost a grand right (laughs) Then I tried like copywriting online. Then I tried the whole agency thing and I would do it really, really hard for two weeks and I wouldn't make any money. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. So when I first started this journey, I said to myself, Tom, you know what? Every single time you started a business online or you've tried to do something, you've gone really hard for two weeks and then you've gotten bored and then you stopped. So I'm like, I'm going to do Twitter for at least three months. No excuses, no nonsense. Just do it and see what happens. Yeah. I don't care if I get one follower. I don't care if I get 10,000 followers yeah. in that three-month time period. You're doing it because you're not sticking to this shit you say that you're going to do. <laughs> so uh, every single day, every single day, I was making sure to put at least three tweets up. I was making yeah. sure to reply to a certain amount of people, get in people's DMs. And now I've almost not only turned it into a habit, but a habit that I very much enjoy, yeah. right? Don't get me wrong. I have an end goal, right? And I do want to monetize it, and I have been monetizing it through coaching programs that I have. But the fact that I took the consistent action in the beginning and I put up no zero days now makes me want to never put up a zero day, right? So, being mindful and then doing it intentionally every single day for maybe the first three months then formed the habitual habit where I find fulfillment within it. Right. Right. And it's just like it's just like going down a weight loss journey, or it's just like going down any sort of journey, building a business. Just because you're you're not netting returns the same day that you're doing something, doesn't mean that it's not going to pay dividends later on down the road. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you know, I think you know the at least the Twitter journey lends itself to a lot of comparison, and which we both know is incredibly dangerous. And you know that that you know kind of to the name of this podcast, right? You versus you. It's like, you know, you, you've heard different variations of it. I mean, I think Jordan Peterson said, 
you know, most succinctly, the only person you should be comparing yourself to is who you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something, something I keep in mind as well. Like, you know, we, you know, every day we're getting older. So you're, it's kind of like a constant crossroads, like you're deteriorating, but you can still be improving, right? That doesn't, that doesn't mean you need to just throw your hands up and be like, all right, hey, I'm done. Like, mm-hmm. you can, my plan, I mean, I, you know, I, I've tweeted about it, written about it on Medium. Uh, it's like, you know, my, the things I do are for longevity. Like, I want people to look at me and be like, man, you look like you're in your 30s. And I just kind of smile and knowingly smile and just say thanks, right? Because, <laughs> you know, I know, I, I know dudes my, my age that look like they're in their 60s. And I'm like, you know, I, I'll be damned if that's ever me. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I think ultimately, like, when improving, you know, you once you get that understanding of what it is you're trying to do, and it could be across multiple areas, you know, you to your point, you got to go all in, but then you got to find that, you know, your all in is different than my all in, and I think they can both be effective, but then ultimately it's like can you sustain them over time? Precisely. And I think if you can, you're going to find some version of success. Now, does that mean 10,000 a month in a Lamborghini in the driveway? Probably not, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. but, but it's like, you know, it, it, it all success is going to look different for everyone. Right. And I think as long as like what you build brings you fulfillment, or at least this is my, my philosophy. If it brings me fulfillment, and then I'm able to help other people along the way, then that's that's what it's all about to me. And I, at least, at the very least, that's what's driving me, like at the at this particular moment. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that fulfillment is the the biggest thing for overcoming obstacles too. Because if you're not finding fulfillment in the journey to the destination that you're trying to get to, I mean, is it really the right destination in the first place? Right. You yeah. Know? So I would say that that is a really great note for us to end on. Uh, if there's anything that you wanted to talk to the people that might be listening about the things that you're working on now, plug your Twitter page, different yeah. medium articles, whatever you want, man. The floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. First, you know, Tommy, I really appreciate the time, I and mean, I know we kind of been messaging leading up to this. So, you know, I hope, hope, uh, you know, I, I hope you have a lot of success doing this. Thank and you, uh, thank you know, you, I man. definitely, definitely want to become a friend of the pod. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm uh, you know I'm primarily on Twitter uh, at evenkeeled one, and then I'm uh, on Medium, uh, same handle. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm around every day. You know, usually hopping in spaces and whatnot. Um, you know, really about you know I, yeah, I talk a lot about discipline, confidence, and whatnot. And you know, again, yeah, wrapping up a military career. Um, but you know, my my goal in life right now is to, you know, take those lessons, um, package them up in a manner that can you know help other people that are, you know, younger than me, older than me, same age as me. You know, I'm, I'm all about helping people improve. And that's, that's my sole mission uh, every day on, on, on the Twitter app. So that's awesome, man. Well, anyone that's listening, please follow Josh on Twitter. I've been speaking to him for a really long time. I promise that there's probably going to be a day where I want to get Josh on the podcast again and I can barely get a hold of him because he's got so many followers. He's so successful. I'm manifesting it for him. I wish it for him. Josh, you've been a fantastic guest, man. I hope that, you know, since this was my first podcast, I hope I was a good host. I I, I tried my best, tried to take notes while you were speaking. And um, I'm really looking forward to us being able to riff like this again, man. Yeah, likewise, brother. Looking Looking forward to it. All right, take care. Right, and you don't have, you don't have to leave by the way. We'll uh we'll just, we'll just end it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but really, man, thank you so much. That was awesome. Genuinely, I'm super happy. The only thing that I'm nervous about, for some reason, it didn't say that my side was recording. Okay. So there's a solid chance. So it was recording for you. Like it shows like recording next to your name on my my little host panel over here. Yeah. But it doesn't say recording next to my name. So what I'm hoping happens. So the way that um, Riverside FM works is that it actually records three separate things. Okay. It records only you, then okay. it records only me, and then it records the both of us. So <laughs> what I what I think happened, and what I really hope happened, because if not, we may actually have to do this again in a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all is good. That it recorded it yeah. recorded you by yourself. It recorded both of us, but then it didn't record the track that was only me. Okay. That's what I think happened, but I mean, we're going to find out when I, when I leave. 
Yeah, well, and, and right now I see, I mean, next to my name is 99% uploaded. Yeah, so, so that's the that's that um that upload that gets saved to okay. um the the local file and then okay. also uploaded into the cloud. Got you. Got you. Yeah. So I I and again, I apologize, man. This is my first time using this, so hey, I, I knew man. that there was going to be some sort of kink somewhere along the line. Oh, good, man. Hey, building in public, right? That's the way it goes. Exactly. <laughs> Trying my best. And then also yeah. um so what I'm going to do is once we once we jump off of here, uh okay. I'm pr- going to download your recording and then hopefully the recording of both of us. Okay. Uh, send them over to Eric, and he's gonna chop them into like those those video bits that sometimes I post on my page. Yeah. So feel free to use whatever you want, man. Um, okay, sweet. Yeah. So um, hopefully you can get like a solid like three for five video clips out of this from us talking, and it's it's just good to just post the content, and it really it really humanizes you to the people that you speak to. You know. Yeah. yeah. Th- that's one thing that I found from from the Twitter spaces is that there's only so much what's the word that I'm looking for? There's only so much connection you can make to somebody reading their writing, right? right? And I think even the best copywriters, the best writers on the planet can only bring so much of their personality out on writing. But when you get onto things and you hear someone speak and you hear their tone and you hear their their inflection and their personality, yeah. it, may, it, it really expedites the process of turning a follower into a fan. Yeah, I, I, I agree, man, because, you know, like I like I mentioned during the space, right, like there's a lot that that's lost in translation, whether you're, you're texting, messaging, you know, you hear people say, oh, don't use exclamation marks, don't use emojis. And it's like, it's like, otherwise, I mean, if you don't, you look like you're just coming across like flat the whole time. Yeah, you're right? just square. <laughs> and, 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 and for sure, like, like, hell, even after the space a couple of weeks ago, you know, I had a few people messaging me, you know, when I just shared my thoughts and. And stuff like this goes, I mean, goes a long way. I mean, I, I'm, and that's one of the reasons, like, I went, you know, I went, um, I didn't go anonymous. I just went, all right, hey, here's freaking professional headshot. And, you know, I, 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 I figure I've been in online communities long enough to know that, you know, I try to have very little, like, what I post online versus who I am during these conversations, I try to make them, like, identical. Um, and, you know, I, I, I try that with my writing too. I mean, I, I try different stuff, but just, I think in general, the message that I'm looking to kind of convey, you know, it's like, I try to get it out and stuff like this and even, you know, inside conversations and whatnot, but yeah, for sure. It's uh, yeah. Putting a face and a voice to a name and a writing style can be, can be huge. And, and man, I will say, you know, I'm looking forward to the future ones you do because I think, I think you got a good thing here, man. So. Oh, thank uh, you, brother. Thank yeah, you. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm excited. Really, yeah, goes, so. You know, I've I've always, I've always had a disposition to talk to people. Like yeah. I, I think I talked about this on a Twitter space that I did with Nick in the beginning of March. I'm not sure if you joined that one, but I've never considered myself a writer. I don't think that I'm good at writing. I think I'm I'm okay. I'm getting better at it because I make yeah. it a consistent habit now to do it on Twitter and for my newsletter and blah blah blah. So yeah. I am getting better. But speaking has always been my strong suit. Yeah. I used to be terrified of public speaking, um, but once I got past that hurdle, I I consistently realized that I have, and I don't want to come off as egotistical when I say this, but I have the ability to speak to things that are maybe like more high level, but yeah. simplifying them to a point that it's easily digestible, and people are like, yeah, you know, like that makes sense, you know. So that's the the primary reason why yeah. I, I started doing those Twitter Spaces. And then I had so many people messaging me after the Twitter space. It's like, do you have a podcast? Do you have a podcast? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. no, I don't. And then I'm like, holy shit, like maybe I should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, for real, it's not egotistical at all, man. I mean, I, I, I I'm with you. I mean, I, I'm a decent writer, but I, I mean, if you can't tell, and if you couldn't tell from the spaces, like, yeah, I like, I yeah, like speaking, talking, man. So yeah, <laughs> I, um, no, I, I, I think. I think you're, you're killing it with the spaces. I mean, the discussions are always insightful, bringing a ton of value. And it's crazy because, um, uh, Tekezo, I just started following him like shit, probably like two days ago. Um, I had no idea who he was. So I was like, Oh damn, he got him on. I was like, okay, cool. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good, man. And, and, you know, if there's anything I can ever do to help out, um, if you just want me to take a look at something or, However, I can help, man. I'm. I'm oh, I'm, thank you. I really I'm appreciate it. I mean, it, the, the same. The same extends for me to you, man. Genuinely, if you ever have like, 
I don't even know, like a, a drafted Twitter thread or or you're trying to do video recordings on your own or even if you just want support for something, man, I'm I'm always there for you genuinely, you know. I think that it's it's great that we've managed to build that like little group chat of us that just kind of yeah. like talks through, you know, the the issues and and our Twitter journey because it's so important and I talk about this all the time on spaces is is having that community that yeah. that helps ground you and helps bring you forward and yeah. and quite frankly like I enjoy being in these communities with us smaller creators yeah. because bigger creators are super busy and quite frankly like their cost benefit analysis of spending time to talk to smaller accounts is not big for them right like you know their time is best well spent speaking to other 100k accounts right like who are we right the peons yeah Yeah. so but that's also the reason why i i love my friend tyler todd because like he makes the time right and i've i've been on his podcast um i'm doing a space with him um next saturday so yeah, like, I, uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm gonna be there for that. I, I follow him too. He's he's a good dude. I've, I've, yeah, he's a great dude. Yeah, yeah so, so yeah, I mean, that, just having that whole community of us is just is just awesome. Like I just yeah. love it. So again, the same thing extends to me, and I think that uh, you should try hosting a couple Twitter Spaces of your own, man. If it's something that you you enjoy doing. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. I um, like we we didn't talk about it much, but it's it's like getting out of the military is like they make it difficult. And so I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with that. And then, you know, there's some, you know, the wife is facing some struggles right now that I'm, you know, trying, you know, trying to balance, make sure the kids are good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, it's, um, it's something I'm going to, I'm going to look into as a matter of fact, I'll, um, I'm going to give it some thought and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up with some ideas to just get your thoughts. I think, definitely, uh, man. I think at this point, I mean, I'm coming up on like 500 followers. I should be able to, should be able to get enough. I mean, I, I, there's a couple guys in one of my groups, um, uh, PJ uh, Milani Creative. He's uh, I think he's like ten thousand. Uh, Tom Harari, he's coming up on like ten thousand. So there's a couple dudes I know if they get in there. I mean, obviously they know you. Um, that could probably yeah, probably yeah. give us some traction. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jot down some ideas and uh, try to get one going in the next few weeks here. I think. Yeah, I've realized now that I've consistently hosted Twitter Spaces that like. I'm very confident that I can fill out a Twitter space because the same people that enjoy like listening to me talk when I like go into one or I'm actively a part of one, they're like, Oh shit. Like Tom's talking on there. Like I want to be on there. Right. 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 The the one piece of advice that I could, I could definitely offer though, is that there's a, there's a bit of a muscle memory switch that you have to use going from being a speaker to being the host. Okay. So I don't know if you've, if you've noticed for the Twitter spaces that I host is that like, I'm always like super on it and I'm always trying to like pull the other person to like answer questions. Right. Right, right. And then like, you know, saying, Oh, you know, thanks for joining us, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, just want to take a pause. Thank you for giving us your time, attention, da, da, da. Like that's stuff that you have to learn to bake in, in like a natural manner. And quite frankly, like I got good at it through just like fucking practice. Right. (laughs) Like now I've probably done Jesus Christ, like either 50 or 60 plus hours of Twitter spaces, like purely hosted. Yeah, no, and, and it, it's, I mean, even with this, you know, the space technical shit, like people coming on yeah. to speak. Oh, um, that was so no, frustrating. It's, it's, I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's pro man. Like it's tra- smooth transitions. There's no, you know, no uncomfortable pauses. I've been on a couple where it's like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, so <laughs> spicy, man. but yeah, I, um, yeah, today's was awesome. I mean, I, you know, it was a uh, nice, you know, I do like a, it's like a three mile walk, just like kind of down and back. So. Yeah, that's I'm what I'm actually going to do after me and you jump off because yeah. I didn't get a chance to do my walk this morning. I My my girlfriend was over, slept yeah. over, literally woke up like, no joke, dude, like 15 minutes before that Twitter space. I woke up. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, right oh, on, shit. Yeah. And, and my, yeah. my girlfriend, Rochelle, was like, oh, my God, you have to be on this space. I'm like, shit. And like, we, were like, <laughs> we were like scrambling. She yeah. was like getting ready literally like right next to me as I was talking on the Twitter space. It was so funny. <laughs> hey, but, man, like, I'm, just, I'm just happy that it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, it was really awesome, man. But, yeah, I'll um, I'll definitely I'll definitely hit you up, you know, when I decide to go that route. I mean, it's I'm still working on some other things. I'm uh, I'm working with uh, Sana. She's Asana, uh like the um oh I thought you meant the project management platform like no Asana. no yeah no no yeah the uh so I'm getting coaching from her right now um working on you know the marketing aspect and then uh creating an offer creating an offer so market research creating an offer um and then 
trying to get, you know, obviously trying to monetize eventually. So yeah, a hundred percent, man. I mean, that's also stuff that I do. If you ever yeah. wanted to have a, a chat about that, believe it or not. And this is not something that anybody knows actually, cause I've never made it public. Um, but I will tell you because I, I consider yeah. you a friend of mine. Um, I'm actually building with another friend of mine on Twitter, a software as a service business nice. that is only going to be for coaches on Twitter or, or okay. social media at large. Yeah. yeah. So literally full stop it's going to be like a a social media scheduling platform it's going to be a website platform it's going to build out landing pages sales funnels everything that you could possibly imagine yeah. all for essentially earning your first dollar as a coach and then yeah. obviously building it into a proper business right because right now you know just through what i have like 2000 something followers yeah and i coach 10 people Okay. And like, that's like, like unheard of for someone who has my following size, right? Like, yeah. And these are all, these are, this isn't an offer that I actively advertise to anybody, yeah. right? It's people that just come to me. And so when me and my buddy started talking about, it, we were like, holy crap, like if we actually built this out into a proper system, then systematized my system for other coaches to apply to their coaching businesses, yeah. you know, anyone can make a, a, a decent sum of money doing coaching. I mean, as yeah. long as they, they're actually good coaches, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So once that's actually up and running, man, you know, I would love to have you a part of our crew. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Let me know, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in this thing for the long haul, man. I got, Same. I mean, that, that'll, we can have another discussion about that at some point, but yeah, it's, it's for me, you know, when I retire, it's like, I mean, yeah, I'll have my pension from the military, but if I have my way, It'll be pension and then whatever I'm making off of this eventually. So hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. and I think that um you're you're already well on your way to be honest with you, man. How how long have you been doing it for now? So I mean, my account I would my old account was open for like four years and I closed. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then I opened this one in September, but I was just using it for like like following football shit, golf shit. But then I basically stripped it. I you know unfollowed, removed all the what yeah. few followers I had. So, but yeah, I started. Uh, full-fledged into this uh basically at the new year so january yeah, so you ha you've almost been you've been doing it almost as long as i yeah. have but i mean i still think that you're seeing very good growth like you know there's 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 a dichotomy between there, there's two different types of people when they're first starting out on twitter i feel like there's people that don't really know where they're going and those are the ones that unfortunately burn out and lose yeah. out in the end and then there's individuals like you and I that like we have the set vision and we're like, you know what, we're going to ride the, the the peaks and the valleys of, of right. the social media game. Right. Yep. And you really do. It's so important to take a long winded approach to it. Like you yes. can't you need to be dedicated. And I hate to say it for life, but it, it that's the the like, the extent that you have to take it to. Right. No, I mean, and, yeah, you're, you're absolutely yeah. you're absolutely right, because there's no like you don't know when you're going to hit that point to where either something clicks or you hit that proverbial peak. Like all of a sudden it's yeah. like slow growth, slow growth, and then boom. Right. Um, that that's not for any of us to know. So like all we can do is just get our systems in place, be consistent as hell network, find a group of people, like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. and then just freaking keep growing, man. And, and, and that's what, you know, I've been hit up by so many people, you know, growth experts, Oh, oh, you know, oh, you could be, you, you could be growing fast. And it's like, yeah, I, I'm aware. Like, yeah. but I, like, I know the last one I was like, look, I, I'm fully aware that I could be growing faster. Like, but I'm, what's important to me is an organic engaged following. That's yeah, what's exactly. important. Who gives a shit about that follower number, right. man? Right. Who cares? So, I, I mean, that that's, oh my gosh. I, I wish that there was somehow on my Twitter profile, I could put a filter that like anyone that DM requests me that has the word growth in it just gets instantly blocked. Yeah. I'm like, or, holy crap. Or a, uh, or a Greek statue profile. Yeah, or a Greek statue. Oh my God. You know how I feel about those <laughs> bastards. But <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh. Because the thing that sucks about it too, is that like, I have a lot of people that come to me in my Twitter DMs to have like actual conversations yeah. with me. And at this point, I've just completely ignored my requests for like days at a time sometimes because I'm like, I already know that half those requests are going to be some stupid ass account that has 10,000 followers and they're telling me how much faster I can grow. Hey, bro. Like, hey, bro. How's your Twitter journey going? Yeah. Right? Hey, bro. Love your content. Okay. Well, you don't follow me, so I don't know how you love my content. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> you yeah, you right, just right. came across my profile, but yeah, yeah dude, they're <laughs> ridiculous.
<laughs> All right, really, man, but man. again, it, it was yeah. an absolute pleasure being able to chop it up with you, man. Yeah, um, like I'm it. hoping hoping for the best with these recordings, quite frankly, but I, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, I'll get you over those clips once okay. uh, Eric makes it, and then I would love for us to be able to chop it up again in maybe like another month. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just, yeah. let me know, man. And, um, yeah, I mean, as long as I know ahead of time. And, yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, I... Again, whatever I could do to help and contrib- contribute. I mean, I just enjoy the conversation, man. For me, that's what. Same, it, man. Yeah, that's what, it's that's all what about. I want this podcast to be. I want it to be like very conversational, you know. Especially yeah. when I have a guest on, because I feel like those are the best ones to just listen to, right? Yeah. It's not like these. I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy listening to like the experts that give like actionable insights and everything, yeah. but like those things can just be so robotic. I mean, to bring yeah. up a thing that we talked about earlier, but when it's just two two guys or, uh, a, you know, a guy and a girl or whatever you want to talk yeah. say, two people that are just yeah. chopping it up and having a conversation, it's just so much more, so much more natural. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and I think it's, I think it's more relatable too. So Definitely. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. I think it's, I think it's going to be huge. So. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm, I think that, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should release like a an intro one where it's like just me talking and then do one like like literally a couple days later that's that's this one is like the first official, you know, like episode 0 to episode 1. Um cuz the cadence that I'm planning on having this be is boring that I don't run out of guests too soon. Yeah. Two episodes a week. One episode would be me talking about a specific topic. Yeah. So like, you know, mindset, wellness, physicality, et cetera. Right. And then next one would be a guest. So it'd be like Tom guest, Tom guest, Tom yeah. guest, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I want to, um, I think on um, this, I mean, that's a pretty solid schedule. I mean, and, and you know, I think there'd be nothing. It'd probably be a good idea to just do a, a plug video, like a, you know, little tease. And then, Hey, this is what I've been working on mm-hmm. episode zero. And then, you know, you know, my first guest is. Yeah. And, and I also got to figure out how to upload this stuff to like Spotify and Apple podcasts, yeah. but that's, yeah. a, that's going to be like a, a YouTube tunnel that I'm going to have hey, to man, go down. Hey, you know, you know, good damn well, that info's out there. So it shouldn't be a problem. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure I can watch 30,000 different YouTube yeah. videos, hopefully on how to, how yeah. to upload this shit. For real, for real. <laughs> All right, man. Well, take it easy. I'm going to go on my walk and it's been a pleasure. Yeah, no worries, man. All right, Tommy, take care, bro. Peace. All right. Later.